This is your fleet. This is the backbone of American power. 50 years of peace worldwide. Now, each one of these ships represent the world's most densely concentrated investment in capital, capability, and personnel. What does that mean? Well, it's very simple. It means they're coming for you. <laughs> From individual developments like high speed, invading anti ship cruise missiles to operational concepts like anti access area denial, our adversaries are trying to stop the United States Navy. Because our power doesn't come from just the amount of strength we have, but the ability to put it wherever we want, whenever we want, for as long as we damn well please. Now, how do I maintain an ability to do that in a denied environment? Well, let me give you the example of the Falklands War. During the Falklands War, British helicopter pilots used their helicopters, due to technical failures and anti-missile systems on their actual ships, as decoys. Steady state, operational, dedicated decoys, running 24-7 to prevent excesses from hitting British ships. So what's the answer? Countermeasure, de countermeasure drones. Now, drones are not a new concept. Here you have the drone anti-submarine helicopter. This was first flown in 1959. Think about that and everybody who thinks the Predator drone is the coolest thing on the planet. 1959. Now, you carry 900 pounds of equipment for over 40 miles, and that's 1959 technology. Imagine how many emitters you could put onto this. And down here, we have China's just unveiled a model of inflatable drone. Now, there was a lot of discussion about making this radar absorbent material. But what happens if you made it reflect? You can use a whole series of different drones that have different equipment that are steady state to defend your ships. And now you say, well, Matt, what's going on? We have lots of ways to shoot down missiles. This is not new to us. What about hard kill options? For those that don't know, hard kill means I shoot the thing down. Well, first of all, if you're going to shoot it with a gun, we all know that's kind of close in. I don't want a missile to get that close to me. And it's a complicated problem. And if I get it wrong, well, I've only got a few seconds before the thing hits me. So I want to get it farther out, right? I want to use a missile. Well, how many of my missiles am I going to dedicate to shooting down the enemy's arrows instead of killing the archer? Put enough of these things to shoot down arrows on my ship and I become a defend ship instead of a warship. But hey, what about soft kill options? I'm just going to confuse the enemy. Confusing the archer is a lot easier and it's a lot cheaper. Why don't I jam? Look at that! It's a giant beam pointing you exactly where I am. That's a horrible plan. Modern day missiles, people think of that. A jam in the missile? Well, where's the jamming coming from? Let's go get that guy. What about chaff? Well, it's installed on your ship. There's not much you can do with it. It's a big, dumb canister. It pops out, boosts into a cloud. What are you going to do with that? Not much. Still useful, but even that deals with the magazine. Because remember, these three options in particular, you've only got so much space on your ship. What drones give you is they give you steady state options. They give you longevity. If you fly something out, most ships that we had have a flight deck. I'm from a PC, we didn't have a flight deck, which was fine by me, it was easier to do things. But you fly one of these out, you can recharge them, you can switch out emitters, you can change what kind of suite you have on board. It's not that hard to do. We already do it already. We have human beings in helicopters, we have remote control helicopters, and we've been using them since the 1960s. But what's really important, this is a ghost army, Patton's ghost army during the Second World War. This is not tactical level countermeasures, this is operational level countermeasures. The entire German panzer divisions were held down because a bunch of inflatable tanks in England, they were worried, were going to land somewhere else in France. So you have enough stupid, cheap, inflatable drones and co uh, coaxial drones flying around with different kinds of emitters. The enemy not only misses <coughs> you, when it fires at you, but even fires at the wrong guy. 
And that's the advantage here. You put enough drones in the air of the right kind, light, compact, inflatable drones, coaxial drones like the Dash take up less space on your flight deck, so they're lighter, they're smaller, they can carry more things, gives you a lot more flexibility. You can do a lot more with this, and unlike chaff, it's not one off, one off, one off, and then all of a sudden you have to walk out and reload, reload the chaff launchers. Well, the enemy's not going to wait for you to reload the chaff launchers to pump another 300 missiles in your general direction. This is the USS Star. In a peacetime environment, the ship was hit with two Exocet missiles. Only one detonated. The other one did fill it with fuel and kill over 30 members of the crew. And this ship almost sank in a peacetime environment. In a war, what do you think is going to happen? Are you going to have tugs around to save your ship? Can complicated vessels like ours today survive something like this? Doubtful. So why get hit at all? Ship, shipmate, self. Defend yourself, countermeasure drones. Boom, mm, done. <laughs> Why should <laughs> now, You know, that's great, unless you're a pilot and you're flying through all those drones trying to get back to the ship. Because even though you've got people controlling those, who's going to open a space wide and open a The idea wouldn't necessarily be to put a swarm of drones. I know people talk about drone swarms. And this is something I thought about. I may have a swoop in, and all these are pictures of ships. I'm throwing flying things out to catch stuff on but my brother's down in Pensacola. He's learning to be a pilot. Yeah. Ultimately, what you would want to do is have something like this. Imagine you're an F-18 pilot, or even worse, a helicopter pilot, because those are even slower. You're flying around. What you want one of the things that's next to you? I would rather the drone get hit than my brother. Actually, no. Maybe the opposite. If it was a random pilot, I would rather the drone <laughs> less as an obstacle and more as something compatible. And also, don't, don't overthink it, because if there's the intention here, with, like maybe put two, maybe put three up in the air, it's not going to be like a cloud of these things. And they're not going to be maneuvering, doing complicated Still stuff. Like you. NAVAIR is looking at this because using unmanned and manned aircraft in the same airspace is also very hazardous to the pilots and the crews. So that's the question I have. How are you going to make things stand up? Because when you come in, you know, there's no hazard warning that's telling me that there's this little thing flying around that they're coming into contact with my rotor system because I was a helicopter. He may fly a little slow, but we get to the point where we need to be. This, this would be something that you wouldn't want these things to be just autonomously. You want them to be autonomous, just going wherever the heck they want. You would put them down a certain threat vector. So if I know. All the missiles are coming from this direction, and my pilots are coming here. I'm not going to put a wall of drones here unless it's my brother. Thank you. Any other questions? I just oh, wait. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, if you ever get tired of the Navy, you got a great purse of chamois, so. <laughs> <laughs>